In addition to searching, operators with the right permissions can use the Identities tab to enroll, configure, and audit identities on the system. From the main page, access the Identities tab by clicking here. To add a new identity, click the highlighted button. Identities can be cardholders, which are people who move throughout the space, and or they can be operators, which are people who monitor and or administer the system. The page loads. Enter information about the new identity in the appropriate fields. In this demonstration, we will use this information for the new identity. Click here to save the new identity. A new page loads. This page displays information on the new identity's roles. A role is a container for all of the permissions an identity needs in order to perform a specific role in the access controlled space. Whether it's accessing certain areas in the space or monitoring and or configuring the system. Currently this new identity has no roles assigned to him. To assign a role, first select the desired role in this list. To select multiple roles, hold the control key on the keyboard while selecting multiple roles. In this demonstration, we will select this role for this identity. Then click here. The selected role moves to this list. This means that this role is assigned to this identity. In other words, this identity has been assigned the permission required to monitor the system. Click here to save the configuration. A message appears stating the configuration is saved and a new page loads. Tokens are a number, usually stored on an access card, which the cardholder uses to access the space. On this page, operators with the right permissions can edit the token details. This number is the physical number on the access card. The embossed number may be the same as the internal number. In this demonstration, we will use this embossed number. If the identity requires a pin to access a door, the identity's pin must be entered into this field. To change the status of the identity, click on the highlighted drop-down list. By default, all new identities are set to active, meaning they can access doors. If, for example, a new identity requires a leave of absence, operators can change the status to inactive or disabled. When inactive, the identity will not be able to access the space. Populate the remaining relevant fields and select the appropriate checkboxes as necessary. Click this checkbox if your administrator requires you to exempt the identity from anti-passback. Anti-passback is a feature on the system which prevents one identity from following another identity through a door without using their token. Click this checkbox to trace the identity's token. Events triggered by this token can be sent to monitoring. Leave this checkbox unchanged from its default. It downloads information about the identity to the control panels. Click this checkbox to disable the identity's token from ever expiring. If the identity has reduced mobility, clicking this checkbox gives the identity extra time to open and pass through doors before they relock and or generate alarms or events. Click this checkbox to exempt an identity from using a PIN if a PIN is normally required for identities to gain access. Click this checkbox to prevent this token from expiring if you know the identity will return after an extended period of inactivity. Use these fields to determine the token issue, activation, and deactivation dates. Click here to save the configuration. A message appears stating the configuration is saved. Operators with the right permissions can add an identity to a group by clicking here. Identities can be put into groups. Groups are useful for various functions, including applying profiles to several identities at a time. For more information on configuring groups, see the help files. To assign an individual identity to a group, first select the desired group. To assign multiple groups, hold the control key on the keyboard and then select multiple groups. In this demonstration, we will assign this group. Then click here. The selected group moves to this list. This means that these groups are assigned to this identity. Click here to save the configuration. A message appears stating the configuration was saved. Next, we will look at this page. This page displays the roles, access groups, and doors associated with the identity. This column shows the roles assigned to the identity. As previously said, a role is a container for all of the permissions an identity needs in order to perform a specific role in the access controlled space. This column shows the access groups assigned to the identity. Access groups define the areas in the space that an identity can access. And this column shows a list of doors that this identity can access. Next, we will look at this page. 
This page shows photos of the identity stored on the system. Because this is a new identity, no photos have been uploaded yet. Click here to upload a photo, or here to capture a photo. The capture page loads. Operators may need to take a photo of the identity to display on the system or to print on a badge. Press here to capture a photo. Please note that this feature is only available if a camera is defined on the system. In this demonstration, we have chosen to upload a file for the photo. Click this checkbox to use this photo on the badge template, which is the template used for making the access card for the identity. Click here to delete the photo. Click here to upload another photo. Click here to save the configuration and click here to cancel it. A message states that the configuration is saved and the photo appears. Next, we will look at this page. This page lists all events triggered by this identity in chart format. Because this is a new identity, no activity is displayed. When there is activity, this column displays the date and time a specific event was triggered. This column displays the priority or importance of the event. Events with a lower number indicate a higher priority. For more information on priority, see the help files. This column displays the type of event that the identity triggered. These columns display the location of the event. This column displays the identity's card number. Finally, this column displays any message associated with the particular event, if any. Next, we will look at this page. This page enables operators with the right permissions to create a badge for the identity. From the drop-down list, select a photo to print on the badge. Only the photos that have been previously uploaded in this sub-tab appear in this list. From this drop-down list, select a token number to associate with the badge. Only token numbers that have been previously defined for the identity appear on this drop-down list. From this drop-down list, select a badge template. Note that if a badge template has not been created, you cannot create one for the identity. And from the drop-down list, select a photo to be printed on the back of the badge. Only the photos that have been previously uploaded in this sub-tab appear in this list. Click this button to print the badge. Click here to save the changes or click here to discard the changes. Next, we will look at this page. The page loads, displaying a log of all the changes that have been made to this identity. The chart displays information such as the date and time that the profile was modified, the operator that modified the identity, the detail that was modified, and what changed. To sum up, when adding a new identity, first enter basic information about the new identity in the identity page. Then, assign the identity to a role in the roles page. Edit their token details such as their embossed and internal number and the status of the token. Then, assign the identity to a group. Capture or upload photos either through the capture page or the photo page. If configured, use a badge template to create and print a badge for the new identity.